Sometimes a development is made that changes everything and then nothing is ever the same again. For most of naval history, the deep oceans were a great limit on large seafaring. Only very small vessels that could easily be rowed could traverse the deep oceans and then only where the weather was usually good. Otherwise, seafaring was locked close to land or in seas mostly surrounded by land or where the direction of the wind was favorable to the limited maneuverability. All this changed with the Iberian Caravel. This was a reasonably large vessel developed by the Portuguese to traverse into the open Atlantic and down the coast of Africa. In the end, it would bring them all the way around the tip of Africa to India in 1497 under Vasco da Gama. And only a few years before, in 1492, Christopher Columbus had sailed Spanish models of the caravel across the Atlantic to America. All of this was due to the development of the caravel. It was a ship that was highly maneuverable and could both tack and beat into the wind. It was thus much less dependent on the direction of the wind and could sail more freely on the waves. It was not as much that these areas were reached by these ships as much as the fact that with the caravel the trip could be repeated again and again. It opened up the oceans so that it was no longer just specific routes with the right conditions, but the entire ocean that was available for travel. The oceans became accessible. The caravel had a fore and aft rig with a Latin sail and thus had roots in the Arab Dao. The Latin sail sacrifices some of the efficiency of the square rig when the wind comes in from the rear but gains the ability to tack and beat into the wind. Further, the caravel had a much better keel and rudder to maneuver in the wind. The Portuguese developed the caravel during the long process of mapping the coast of Africa as they sl slowly crawled down in an effort to find a route to India. The process of sailing the African coast had started in 1415 as the Portuguese had driven the Muslims out, but when the Ottomans cut off trade routes to India over land in 1453, the search began in earnest. This set off the development of the caravel that was based on the Arab Dao and was first focused on coastal navigation. The caravel was not a large vessel, only about 20 meters long and had a crew of 25 men. In order to gain more speed when the wind was right, later developments of the caravel would start to combine a square rig with the Latin fore and aft rig. This would combine the best of both, the speed and force of the square rig with the maneuverability and ability to beat into the wind of the fore and aft rig of the Latin sail. This would be a further development, however, as more rigs required larger ships with more masts. An early example would be the larger now, of which Santa Maria of Christopher Columbus was an example, while his two other ships, Pinta and Nina, were caravels. It was the caravel that was the base form of the new ships of exploration, however, and all later ships in the age of the large sailing ships would be descendants of this first true ocean-going ship as they built on this groundwork. The caravel also brought with it the development of much better harbors 
as its deep keel required deeper harbors, else connection to land would need to be done by smaller boats, which would be the case in many of the areas that could be visited by the caravel. As the caravel was able to maneuver close to the shore, the Portuguese seafarers set up stone crosses called patros as they went further, so later expeditions could see the progress from near shore. If not for the development of the caravel, there would not have been a great era of maritime exploration and the world would not have been connected by the sea. The legacy of the caravel would remain in the great sailing ships until the advent of steam-powered ships.